What up, IDS Mob? So today, we're gonna to be answering the question of what it's like to date somebody that's from a different community than yours. And I actually got this question from somebody who's clearly seen a lot of my content because I've mentioned the various different types of women that I've dated and the different types of races, the different types of communities that they've been in. And so this guy wrote me, he said, uh, as a fellow Eritrean, it was very surprising to hear that you had dated someone from our small minority community. Could you share your thoughts on dating someone from a community where marriage and family is a top priority versus dating someone where those types of pressures are not as apparent? Well, I want to start off by saying that I believe that most in most communities, there's going to be a variety of things that they're looking for that just across the board are generally shared. But that said, Having dated in a different set of social economic communities, whether it's uh, Eritrean, Armenian, Indian, um, and some various other ones, there are definitely things that I've noticed that's that's different about dating those kinds of women versus dating like traditional, stereotypical American women. And keep in mind, I'm, I'm African-American myself, so even within my community, there are certain things that we uphold that we typically look for when we're dating. But even within the scope of black people, there are a wide variety of blacks. I've dated Jamaicans. Uh, like I said, this the, the, a woman I dated in particular was, was Eritrean. And so in having those experiences, there are definitely some major pros to be had from dating within a community where family and marriage is highly valued. But there are also some things that I did not anticipate that ended up to me or, or to, to potentially to you be seen as cons or things that you need to be made aware of before you go down the route of dating outside of your community. So I'm going to go over what some of the pros were and then what some of the cons. And they kind of go parallel hand in hand with each other. Okay. So Go through the pros. So first of all, the first pro of dating in a community where marriage and family is a top priority is that most of the women in that community are dating with intention. Like very rarely are they just dating just to date or just to have fun or just to pass the time. I find women in communities where they really value family and marriage are typically going to be dating with the hopes of also finding a husband. So for you guys that are worried about, you know, traditional American women where it's like, you know, oh, they can just be dating just to hook up and have fun and you can't tell which one it is. In most communities outside of the American community, if a woman's dating you, it's because they are trying to to hopefully have this work out so you can be their husband and they can be your wife. So it's good knowing that you're going in with that intention. If you're a guy that's looking for a woman to marry, most of the women in those types of communities are going to be marrying specifically for that purpose. So that's a pro. Another pro is a family input in a mate is valued and it is important. Now, I'm a person that wants to marry into a uh, with somebody that has like a family that they get along with and that is close to them. And so if you're dating in a community that does that, what that means is that it's not going to just be about her making a decision about you, but also about how does this affect the family? And that means they're going to probably ask for input from their family about, hey, you've met this guy. How do you feel about him? You know, do you see like, do you, are you seeing things about him that maybe I don't see? Could you see him being a value to me and also the you know community at large? Um Ideally, the family is going to vet to see if like maybe you want kids and she wants kids also or if you guys are on the same page with that or whatever. But I believe that because most families in this situation are usually have the best intentions for their daughter. And so their input's going to be made valuable, which is good because usually that means if, if the woman is valuing her family's input, it means that they have a strong connection to their family, especially if they have a strong connection to their father, because you typically want to try to date women that have good relationships with their fathers. And I find in these communities, more often than not, you'll find that to be true. Now, there, there can be some other things, which I'll get into a little bit later, but typically, if, if they're looking for their family's input, it means that they usually have a good relationship with their family, and ideally, you're trying to get into that. Another pro is that most women in these kind of communities where uh, family and marriage is valued, they typically have a very low body count. Like most of the women that I've dated outside of the American community typically haven't had more than two, maybe three tops, or they started, you know, having their physical intimacy relationships later in their dating life, like in their mid to late twenties. All right. And so that means that you don't have to worry about too many bodies in the background. There's not too much of a worry about having STDs. And it just, you know, as a guy, obviously, you know, that that's important, even though we, you know, try to keep a balance and say, just like men hook up, women have the right to go out there and hook up. But in more traditional 
families where marriage and family is valued, women typically value their physicality more because they really are trying to save it for that person that's going to be with them long term. And so, you're, which, which results in also not having a lot of physical baggage. Because I know as a person that has hooked up with quite a few people, I know there can be physical and emotional baggage with people that you're no longer hooking up with that you just, you know, can come up every, every so often. But with women that have a low body count, that's not really happening a lot. And in those kind of communities, you'll typically find those kind of women, which is a plus. And then another pro is that um, in these type of communities, I find that women typically have uh, traditional values and are usually uh, taking on more feminine roles. So you're, you're, it's not that women in these communities don't like have jobs, dreams or ambitions. But what it does mean is that if you're a guy that's looking for a traditional household where there are traditional roles of the man being the head and being the leader and you're the one probably making more money and she's taking on more of the feminine roles of like cooking and cleaning and rearing the kids, then you're going to find that women in these communities typically are the ones more often than not that are going to do that. All right. So that can be a pro if you're a guy that's wanted to be a family man and wants the woman to do more of the traditional women stuff. And again, that doesn't mean she can't have a job or I mean, I, you know, or you know, work someplace that, that she values or whatever. It's just that for her, the value is more so on taking care of family, taking care of the kids, making sure that, you know, the man's properly guiding the family in the way that it needs to go. If that means helping him out, then so be it. But that's kind of nice. If you're a guy that's looking for a traditional type of family lifestyle, you're going to find that more in those communities where marriage and family is a top priority. Now, with that said, though, just like there's these pros, there are pal parallel cons that I found in the process of uh, dating outside of my community. And so... One of the major ones is, and this is a thing that I really didn't, it, it, it was really hard for me to get used to, is that um, you don't typically meet family unless you're engaged. So I've had it where, you know, in in my relationship with the woman who was a reach man, we dated for like, gosh, I want to say three, maybe four years, no, three years, three and a half years before I was finally able to meet her mom, her dad, and her brother, all right? And so to me, that felt weird because... I think she had met my mom like in around like year two of us dating. And I felt it was really unfair that she was able to meet my mom, but I wasn't able to meet her parents. But that, at the time, I didn't have the understanding of in their community, they don't want to keep bringing random guys home time and time again. So you only reserve that for that person that you've really made that connection with to where you're thinking about and talking about getting married to them. So for an American, that's going to be pretty weird because a lot of guys in the American culture are trying to take the women around to meet the family and friends after like two or three dates, real talk. But even if it's not that short of a time, usually within like three to six months, they're trying to get their girlfriend to meet their family. And so I just found it's it's oftentimes not like that in roles where, because honestly, if, if you're talking about a community where marriage and stuff is and, and family is valued, well, who's to say this guy's not a five by night guy? So why would you bring him around in six months if he's not gonna be around in a year from now? Like, unless this guy's made a stable footprint then there's no way he's coming around. But as an American, that could be a hard thing to get used to. Um, another con is that, yes, family is going to have input and their value, but also family can be a bit too much in your business because, you know, I, I do believe that couples should have things between them and issues that they talk about. But a lot of times the family at large comes into issues that should just be between, be between you and that other person. And that can cause turmoil if you're not used to that. If you're a guy that's like, you know, our business is our business, then, you know, having your significant other go to the family and talk about business and then try to give their input and try to say what you should be doing, that can be a really hard thing to get used to if you're not aware that that's what happens in other communities. Uh, another, another con, which is a really, really big one, is that oftentimes in cultures and in, um, you know, families where marriage is the focus, family is the focus, that's the top priority. What that usually means is that sex isn't really talked about a lot. Now, to be fair, I believe in America in general, I think sex is a topic that isn't brought on early on. In fact, funny enough, a lot of creators on, on YouTube will get demonetized if they say the SCX word too many times in their videos. So that just goes to show you just on an American level how taboo of a topic being physically intimate is to where I got to say physically intimate so the censors won't catch me saying the SEX word the whole time, all right? But the point is, so that's an American culture. So you can imagine in a culture where it's all about family and about valuing, you know, not not even being able to meet the family before you guys begin become engaged, that sex doesn't get talked about a lot. And so what I found is that because of that, it can affect 
a sex life. Because think about this. You have a woman that's been told to value her stuff down there and not give it up to anybody. And that's all they're being taught. They're not being taught like when you do meet this person, here's the things you can do in the bedroom that's going to be exciting for you, exciting for him. And it's going to be okay to do these things. Like they don't get told that part. So fast forward to you, you know, you're with a woman who's from this family culture. She's done held on to her virginity for like a quarter of her life. So she's like 25, 26 and hasn't done anything yet. And now she's suddenly being like, she's with you. And maybe because you're an American guy, she's willing to like, you know, acquiesce and have those physical things. But she doesn't know the first thing about what to do. She doesn't know how, what she's going to find pleasing. She definitely doesn't know what you're going to find pleasing. And I also found that it can be one of those things where it was, it was so heavily pushed on them not to do things that they feel kind of, how do I say this? They feel weird trying to do anything outside of what would be traditional standard physical intimacy, which is mostly like missionary, that's usually pretty much it. And so getting them out of their comfort zone to do other things, to wear certain things in bed, to be able to say certain phrases to you in bed that you would like can be like pulling teeth because they never get to get comfortable with. Because again, the culture is focused on marriage. They're not focused on the physical aspect of marriage. So a lot of times it's just, they just assume, well, once you guys get married, you'll figure it out. But, and, and by the way, this isn't just in like Eritrean culture or Armenian culture, or whatever, because, you know, in American Christian culture, for people that are pressed the whole like, you know, oh, wait till you're married to do whatever, they get their wedding night and also don't know what they're doing. And that can be frustrating. And then they feel weird because they haven't allowed, they haven't been allowed to express that side of themselves, nor have they been talked about with anybody else about how to express it. And so you have people that are just sitting there like trying to figure out what to do and it can feel awkward. But especially for the women, if you're an American that's, you know, had your physical intimacy experience a few times over and you come into a community where that's not really happening, you may find that there's going to be a lot of uncomfortableness coming from the women about performing certain acts and doing certain things in bed. And it's really, really hard to push past that barrier. Cause you figure you have somebody that for the last 25 to 30 years has, has been, has had a certain viewpoint about physical intimacy pushed on them and how it's dirty and it can be all this other stuff to where now they got to get comfortable with it, but they're more used to not being comfortable with it. So it can be really, really hard trying to get them out of their comfort zone to do things that they would probably find pleasing if they would just allow themselves to do that. And then the fourth con that I found is that I said earlier a pro is that women have traditional values and are usually more feminine or take on feminine roles. Well, the downside is that there are also many women that say, you know, if they're pushed into this idea of like they have to follow a specific feminine role, what if they have like dreams or ambitions where they want to do things or try things that would make them maybe a lot more money or put them in a place where they could be a more, a more of a lead role, but they're being told they can't do that. And, and so it's now pushing against what they want to do. So I found that Many women in that those particular cultures can have low self-esteem due to not feeling valued or wanting to take on all the roles that they're being told that they can't take on. And it kind of sucks because like I'm a guy that's like, hey, I, I, I work and I do things, but if a woman that I'm with is working or has dreams she wants to do, that's totally fine with me. But when you come in, into a culture where you know traditional roles are valued, a woman can start to feel disappointed in herself either for not wanting to take on traditional roles or wanting to take on other roles but not knowing how to because they haven't been trained how to do so up to this point. And so a lot of women in that culture, I find like they, they can be bipolar, they can be depressed, they can just, you know, not that they're not ever happy, but it's just they're not really fully feeling the level of happiness that they could feel because they feel like they're trapped and having to do take on certain roles that they saw their moms and their grandmas take on, not aware that their grandmas and their moms and grandmas also probably felt the same way, but they didn't feel they could they could voice it because they felt as though like you know women are communal. So let's say a woman in the community like wants to step outside the role of what's traditionally feminine or female and, and like take on a leadership role somewhere. Well, other women in that community are going to be pushing her to stay in the feminine role to where she'll acquiesce and do that, but she'll be depressed as a result. And so there's a lot of women that are depressed. And again, to be fair, in American culture, as we've seen, there are plenty of women that are depressed too. And I'm sure there's a lot going on about women wanting to do certain things or being told to act a certain way that they don't want to. 
uh, in order to keep things quote unquote traditional, that's causing them to have to be on medications and take pills and all those other things and go to therapists constantly or whatever. But that's just something to look out for. So those are things that I found were pros and cons, that there's a lot of great things about being a, a, dating women who are from communities that are all about marriage and about family and about traditional values. But there are definitely some cons that come with that in terms of, like I said, in terms of um, not being able to meet the family as soon, not being able to uh, worry about whether or not the family is going to be in your business because spoiler alert, they probably will be. Um, the whole physical intimacy aspect can really be skewed and then women oftentimes can be very depressed. It's just a thing that you have to look out for. So as a guy going into a different community to date that's, that's typically more traditional, I would say be aware of these things, be mindful that there are going to be some differences that you're going to come up against that may feel awkward to you. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it comes down to you and your partner. And so ideally, you're going to get with somebody where you can talk about what things they really look for in a relationship. Are they trying to be traditional? Do they mind doing certain physical things in the bedroom? Or is that something that they just can't, can't seem to get past? Because I will tell you, it will de- those things will definitely affect you going long term. Because like I ultimately ended up the, the, the reaching person I was dating, uh, as nice as she was, as caring as she was, there were definitely things um, that she grew up in and that she you know grew up being that just that based on the community that she was in that in terms of long term wouldn't gel with me it didn't make her a, a, a worse person it didn't make either of us a bad person I just recognized that because of the of, of certain areas of her personality based on how she was raised that in terms of a long-term thing, it was going to be frustrating both for her and me to try. Cause I would be trying to push her to do certain things that she's not going to feel good doing. And I'm going to be stuck having to do things that I didn't want to do. But that's not to say that every single experience of, of dating somebody outside the community is going to be like that. That was mine with this, with this, uh, specific person and I still you know wish them all the best to this day but that was my experience dating that particular person like I said I've dated other people outside of my community since then and some have been better than others it's just you take you you got to go in knowing what you're going to get and then see what the workaround is and see if you're if you both are able to see things from both of your guys' cultures and see what you're going to take on what you're not going to take on lead to the wayside or continue on with and see if you can handle it. That's just how it is. So hopefully the guy just answers your question. And thank you for that because people really ask me about like my my actual dating experience of people that I've dated and why it did or didn't work out or what my or you know what it was like during that time period. So I appreciate the question. For the rest of you guys, if you have any questions you'd like to ask me uh, or give answers to, you can leave them in the comments below. If you're listening to a podcast, you can write to me at harrywilmington at gmail.com or you can subscribe to my YouTube channel at uh, harrywilmington, youtube.com slash harrywilmington and leave your questions there. All right. Be sure to go to the website to check out my ebooks, audiobooks, and programs, all designed to date, help you date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. Also, if you want to show a monetary thank you, go to the website, click on the tip jar tab, and say thank you. You can also leave a happy donation on my YouTube page as well. That's it. I'm Harry Wilmington, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode. I'm out. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Introvert Dating Success Podcast. Visit us at introvertdatingsuccess.com for more great tips on attracting women using your natural introvert charm. Oh, yeah.